Parshas Emor. This week's parsha contains the mitzvah that we're actually in the middle of performing now, which is that of Sfiras HaOmer, the counting of the Omer. The Pasuk says in Chaf Gimel uh, Tesvav, that's uh, the verse in chapter 23, verse 15, says as follows, Sfaitem lachem mi macharas ha-shabos, you will count for yourselves from the day after the Shabbos. The Shabbos, Chazal uh, read that not to mean the, the Saturday, but rather the, the, the day after uh, the day on which um, creative activity is prohibited, uh, and that would be uh, the first day of Yom Tov. It's identical in its prohibitions to Shabbos, except for the Ochel Nefesh Bilvad, for uh, food preparation. And in the cycle of, um, or in the continuum of preparing for food, theoretically, you could attribute uh, a food preparation to almost anything. You could build a house to contain food preparation. So Chazal say it's milisha ve'elech from the process of uh, kneading the dough. But you can bake the dough and you can uh, you can use a fire uh, on Yom Tov. And mimachas hashabbos means the day on which uh, there is a shavisa, a cessation from malacha, from uh, prohibited creative activity. Um, I, I heard this uh, explanation from my late brother, Zuchon Racha Aaron Yosef, and also saw it recently in the Malbim. So <clears throat> the the phrasing here, it says, so you count from the uh, day after the the, uh, the cessation of activity, the day after the first day of Yom Tov, um, from the day that you bring the wave offering of the Omer, which was uh, of barley, um, the sheaf of the wave offering, seven complete weeks. So you have a few questions that are based on the language. It says, Usfartem lachem, which is in plural. You all should count for yourselves uh, from the day after uh, the day of cessation of work. So w- first of all, why do we need the word lachem? Why doesn't it just say, Usfartem mimokha shashavas? You will count from the day after Shabbos. And also, why, doesn't it, why does it uh, express this in plural? Uh, it could have said, Usfartem lachem, as the... Torah does concerning Yovel. Uh, you will count for yourself uh, seven cycles of years. Seven cycles of seven years. And that's counting the Shemitah years leading to the Yovel. There's also uh, concerning uh, counting for various types of Tuma where you have to, of spiritual impurity, where you have to count in order to uh, know how many days have elapsed. Another question is, um, why do we count up? Why don't we count down to the day of Kabbalah Satara? The day of Kabbalah Satara, the day of receipt of the Torah, what does that have to do with anything? And it's not mentioned here, but it is mentioned in Chazal. Uh, Chazal say that uh, when the B'nai Israel and the children of Israel were getting ready to, uh, to leave Egypt, so uh, Moshe said, uh, you see that mountain over there? Will be uh, you. You will be serving God on that mountain, and they said when, and he said in fifty days. So they started counting. So why is that a count up, and not a countdown? So we have a, a discussion of this mitzvah uh, among the commentaries, the early commentaries that were shown him. Uh, we have a problem, and the problem is it's the the trigger seems to be miyom haviachem esomar tenufa from the day that you bring the omer offering, this barley offering. And uh, we don't bring it anymore. We don't have the temple. We don't have the base of Mikdash. So why are we counting? And um, there's a discussion in the Gemara Menachos that says, uh, in discussing the components of the counting, uh, that you actually not only count days, but you count weeks as well, mitzvah lemimni yomi, mitzvah lemimni shvui, that we count both the days and the weeks. And there are various opinions there, but one of the opinions is that it's Zecha Mikdash that it's a commemoration of the Mikdash, commemoration of the Temple. In other words, we're not counting, according to the, the, the predominant reading of this Gemara, we're not counting because of the mitzvah of counting, but rather we're counting because they counted a time at the base of Mikdash, and we're counting as a commemoration of what happened to the base of Mikdash, even though we, though we don't have the Temple anymore. In which case, according to those we've shown him, uh, popularly identified with Rashi, there are others who agree that the, the mitzvah it, that we observe today is not biblical in its nature. It doesn't derive from the Torah but rather it's rabbinic in nature. The rabbis have required it, but it, under, under Torah law by itself, since we no longer are bringing the Korban Omer, we would no longer have miyom haviachem esomar tenufa. We would no longer have the day on which the Omer offering is brought. So what do we have? We don't have the starting gun. All we have is zechel mikdash, a commemoration. The Rambam, on the other hand, says in a way that is unambiguous 
that the obligation is actually a b- biblical derivative. This is in Tamidim Umusafim, Perksayan Halachabes, that's uh, 7 2. Mitzvah ase, there's an affirmative obligation, to count seven complete weeks from the day of the bringing of the Omer. Shenemar, quoting our verse here, Svaitam Lachem Machos Shabbos, Sheva Shabbosos, etc. He says, Umitzvah Limnos Hayomim Im Hashvuos, and there's a mitzvah to count the days and the weeks. Shenemar Tisru Hamishim Yom. And then he also says, he says, Mitzvah Zo. This uh, command is obligatory on every man of Israel in, in every place and at every time. Now, it's a mitzvah saseh shazman groma. It's a time-triggered mitzvah, so essentially women are exempt. There's some discussion about uh, women counting and uh, the general uh, the generally accepted practice is that women do count, even though the women are exempt from time-bound mitzvahs. They've accepted upon themselves like they have with uh, uh, the sounding of the shofar, listening to the shofar and lulav, etc. Um, <clears throat> but the point here is that the Rambam says that this is a mitzvah midoraisa. It is a biblical force, even bizman even nowadays when we don't have the uh, the carbon omer. How could that be? So the Aruch Shulchan says that uh, the driver, as far as the Rambam is concerned, is the, based on this medrash, which is. In 50 days, we're going to be serving God. And now we're commemorating that we served God. That is, we received the Torah as a uh, as an act of our connection and our service of God. And uh, what we're commemorating is the count up to the receiving of the Torah. So according to the Rambam, it's Midor Isa because the driver is not the bringing of the Korban Omer. So if that's not the case, then why does it say Mioma Vyachemis Omar Tufa? So the Arachoshan says that <clears throat> there is a process that takes place between the time we begin the counting of the Omer and we end, which is we're leading up to Kabbalah Satora, leading up to a reenactment, if you will, in some measure, or a commemoration of the receiving of the Torah that took place on uh what we now call the holiday of Shavuos. And the bringing of the Omer marks the beginning of the counting. It's not that the counting is triggered by the beginning of the Omer, but the beginning of the Omer, excuse me, the bringing of the Omer is what uh, is how we uh, mark or celebrate the beginning of the count. And then we end with Shavuos, and which has a different type of grain offering, it, which is unique to Shavuos, which is the Shtei the the two loaves of bread that were specifically for um, for Shavuos. And the, the rabbis observe that the uh, grain that we start with is uh, barley, which is typically considered to be Michael Behema. It's considered to be uh, animal food, uh, although many of us, including myself, have uh, barley in our cholin, but the, the dominant uh, wheat, excuse me, the dominant grain product that our foods uh, are made from is wheat. And uh, this reflects, and that is the grain that the shtealechem, the two um, uh, breads, are made of, and it's to show that it's only through the Torah that we succeed in elevating ourselves from our basic animal existence to a human, to a loftier and spiritual existence. Now let's get back to the usfartem lochem, y'all count for yourselves, um, in contradistinction to those which are said in a singular form. Uh, and the rabbis say this means that it's an obligation on every individual. It's not a communal obligation like it would be with Yovel, where it says with Safarta Lecha, or even for Zav, which is personal, which is somebody who becomes uh, spiritually defiled, Tameh, because of some kind of emission, bodily emission. Uh, there, the mitzvah isn't to count, but rather to be mindful of the passage of time. And for us, it's not that way. For us, it's a mitzvah to count. And not simply to be mindful of the passage of time, but actually to use the time to prepare for the reenactment of the receiving of the Torah. And uh, so that would explain why it's usfartem, you should count for yourselves, or rather you should count and then lachem. So the rabbis say that it's like the rabbis say for lech lecha, go for yourself, meaning lanascha, for your benefit. This was said to Avram Avinu. So svartem lachem, that you, you get a benefit out of this svira. You get a benefit out of 
uh, counting, which is that it's not just marking time until the holiday of Shavuos, but rather it's working up towards the holiday of Shavuos. It's almost like doing reps in a uh, in a workout with, with weights or other exercises. You count one, two, three, four. You're building up. And for Sfiris Omer, we are building up towards receiving the Torah. So we get ourselves, we try to condition ourselves. Why is this important? Well, we're commemorating on Pesach, we're commemorating our physical freedom. And when we receive the Torah, we're commemorating our spiritual freedom by having the Torah and by having a, a framework and a law in which we can impose on our lives and free ourselves from temporal temptations and actually go for the gold, which is uh, things that have eternal meaning. So that's very much for our benefit. That's usfartem lachem. Each of you individually should count towards the giving of the Torah. And that is ultimately so that we can um, fulfill this. And, and, and it's an individual counting. It's not a collective counting. Everybody counts, but everybody's got an obligation to do it themselves. The postcom say that the, the authorities say that you can't, you can't be yotze. You can't fulfill your obligation by listening to somebody else count. You can fulfill your obligation of hearing the bracha, the blessing, from somebody else, but not the count. The count is, is a mitzvah shavaguf. It's something that every individual has to do because every individual has to work on himself and do the preparation necessary uh, for gearing up for receiving the Torah and to be machshiv the Torah and to consider the Torah something of value and of importance that we are working on ourselves and building up ourselves so that ultimately the Torah that we get is not just a collective Torah, but it's an individual Torah as well. It's one that we each acquire as the second verse in Tilim says, that initially the Torah starts out as being something other than us, distant from us, not terribly distant, but apart from us. It's Torah Hashem, but the ultimate goal is to make it Torah so, to make it his, meaning our individual Torah. And we do that uh, in part by this counting through the vehicle of counting Sirius HaOmer, and ultimately by how we deal with the Torah on Shavuos, in the days and weeks leading up to Shavuos, on Shavuos itself, and then, of course, for the rest of the year. Have a good chance.